We are excited to have Jennifer Prinsing, a 10-year sustainability professional who's currently sustainability manager responsible for reporting at the Dow Chemical Company and also a member of the ACLCA Policy Committee. Mike Levy, who is senior director for a group within the American Chemistry Council, the Plastics Food Service Packaging Group, a national organization representing major producers and raw material suppliers of plastics, food service, and packaging products. Mr. Levy also serves as a senior director of life cycle issues for the plastics division of ACC, is on the ACLCA board and chair of the ACLC policy committee. We are also honored to have Dr. Kuma Sumitha Pala, who is director of fire and energy technologies with the American Wood Council, also on the ACLCA board and a member of the ACLCA policy committee. Now let's jump in and get started with Mike. Thank you, De Debbie, and uh, thank you everybody for joining us today. Um, again, my name is Mike Levy and I'm with the uh, American Chemistry Council. Uh, I'll put in a little plug for uh, the members of the policy committee, uh, and Jennifer's gonna go over that with you. Um, the group that uh, Debbie represents, the American Center for Life Cycle Assessment, has really been a great forum for all of us to participate in on a number of issues, in particular, this, this ISO issue uh, of standards and, and LCA. So uh, today um, we're gonna cover uh, a number of things. For those of you that are really new to the whole ISO process, I'll take a few minutes to, to kind of go through the ISO 101 and get you acquainted with the lingo and the vernacular that's used. And then Jennifer and Kuma really get into uh, our involvement uh, on the very various committees, particularly the, the LCA group. Um, so again, uh, let, let's move forward and I'll talk a little, little bit about uh, the ISO uh, uh, um, process. So uh, what is an ISO standard? Um, the International Organization for Standard defines a standard as a document established by consensus, that's key, and approved by a recognized body that provides for common and repeated use rules, guidelines, and characteristics of their activities aimed at achieving the optimum degree of order in a given context. Basically, at the ISO level, this is a consensus organization, so, so that's key to an international standard. So uh, again, what does the standard do? Um, a standard does a number of things. It, it defines uh, the fitness of an object or a process for a specific purpose. Uh, in our case, we'll talk a little bit about the life cycle standards, for instance, and uh, you know how it interchanges. Uh, it also establishes different criteria, uh, not only for safety, but, but for, for implementation. Uh, it establishes effective management of quality and environmental management systems. Um, and, and speaking as someone who was involved back in the early 90s for this particular life cycle standard, uh, it really does give credibility, I think, to the whole process. Uh, once an ISO standard is developed and then it takes a number of years for people to use it as practice, it gives you some kind of credibility. Uh, so how are these ISO standards developed? Well, well, basically, ISO develops the majority of their standards through what they call technical committees. Uh, or TCs. Um, now the countries are really the member bodies who participate through their national groups on behalf of ISO. So for instance, in the US, we participate in the ISO standards through the group called ANSI, A-N-S-I, which is the American National Standards Institute. Um, and ANSI contracts with a lot of different organizations in the US to be administers, administrators. And when we talk about the life cycle group, for instance, uh, another group under ANSI is the ASQ or the American Society for Quality. So really it's through the, those two US standard groups, the ASQ and ANSI, that US participates in this process. Other countries obviously have their own standards organizations. So these technical advisory groups basically conduct the standards work in the US. And we'll get into that a little bit. So what are these US tags? Uh, you'll hear the word tag a lot in ISO, and it's kind of like the game of tag. It means you're it. Basically, that's where everything happens. 
uh, in the case of, uh, of, of the technical committee uh, 207, which is the one that basically deals with environmental management, and that's the one we'll be talking about today, uh, that particular tag of 207 has all kinds of different activities under it. Uh, not only the life cycle group, labeling, uh, environmental management systems, and we'll get into that a little bit later. But I think the key here is within this, this U.S. tag, we basically have a voice in the standards process of coming up with a consensus standard. And again, I think it's important to remember that we're dealing with a lot of countries. So in this case, the U.S. has one vote as a country. So within that, that technical group, we all kind of come together put together the US position, and then we come to the table. So again, uh, going back to the, my, my 1993 kickoff of the ISO life cycle standards, at the time, I believe there was 30 countries that were participating, and the US uh, back then had like 400 people in their delegation. Uh, but again, we had one vote. So uh, it's important for the US to be able to be represented. So what are the roles of, of these standards groups? ANSI and ASQ. As I mentioned before, these tags are authorized by ANSI. So whenever we go to one of these tag meetings, uh, it's really the standards group that kind of administers it. We, we pull everything together. Um, and as I mentioned before, uh, ASQ is really kind of the main group that does this, this TC207 work that, that, that we'll be talking about today. So what, the, what those administrators do, and I'll tell you who those people are, is they're kind of really, you know, they're the key staff folks that work with the tags. They, they submit the U.S. position to the U.S. Standard Group ANSI for submission to ISO. There's a formal process, but for all of you on the phone, as individual members, for instance, of, of the U.S. TAG, uh, your organizations, uh, you, you have a vote, and then together as a U.S. TAG, we come up with like a position. Uh, and later on today, Kuma is going to go over in detail where we are on one of the more active lifecycle standards tags. So who are these standards team? Uh, and, and now I'll, I'll just kind of give you um, uh, some contact information here. If any of you on the phone uh, are interested in participating in the ISO process, if you're not already involved and you kind of want to know the details, um, there's a couple of folks on the ASQ team that, that can definitely help you out. Uh, Jennifer Admonson is the standards manager, uh, and Julie Sharp is the standards administrator. Jennifer and Julie are really kind of the people that are, are the, the putting together all the information for all these meetings that many of us that participate. Um, so again, um, you know, if you wanted to contact them on what it means to join ANSI to be able to participate on definitely go ahead and do that. And then finally, um, before I hand this over, um, I've included some helpful links uh, for those of you that really want to get into that. Uh, and again, th this is um, mainly for ASQ and ANSI. Uh, it's I'm kind of wearing my, my recruiting hat here, but it, it is a nominal membership uh, to participate. And you have to be a member of one of these groups. Uh, we're talking, you know, dollars, not, not a lot of, lot of uh, investment. Uh, but it gives you an opportunity to participate. So with that now, uh, I'm going to turn this over um, to Jennifer Princing, and she's going to really get involved in uh, uh, where we in ACLCA uh, get involved with ISO. Uh, so at this point, Jennifer, uh, could you uh, pick it up from here? I sure can. Thank you, Mike. And uh, thank you, Debbie, for organizing us and all of you for listening in. Uh, so yeah, as Mike described, um, I'm gonna tell us a little bit more about how ACLCA can and does get involved in this ISO process. Uh, it's very important um, because we in the US are the practitioners and those that are using these standards and uh, really have a stake in making sure that uh, the standards remain um, good quality and usable for all of us as practitioners. So um, how can the voice of ACLCA be heard at ISO? And one of the ways um, is for us to actually as an organization become a liaison member of ISO. And uh, we've begun uh, the process of doing that and getting a liaison member approved. 
But this lets us have a voice, not a vote, but a voice at the task group and subcommittee level within ISO, uh, which is, as I say, very important uh, because we are in the U.S those that are using the standards and those with the technical expertise around ACLCA. Um, within ACLCA, we um, also just use our policy committee, the membership, to provide input on life cycle issues in this process. On the next slide, I can show that we have many of the members of that policy committee are engaged um, with the ISO technical committees within the U.S. and other groups. So we do have a voice to have um, a formal position and a formal voice we're working on that liaison status. Um, so we're hoping that that will um, become um, reality here fairly soon. Uh, so I'm going to go to the next slide with that does show those policy committee members um, on specifically the SC5 um, technical advisory group. So you can see a number of organizations and the highlight here is a lot of the overlap, right? So um, many of the members of the policy committee are members on that ISO um, subcommittee five related to life cycle assessment. Um, so a lot of those groups, so they all participate in those meetings, share uh, their expertise and their opinions on um, the conversation that leads uh, to the U.S. position um, for the ISO um, LCA standards. Going next to uh, how's the international work done? So U.S. TAG, as Mike described, um, in our case, managed by AFQ, that U.S. TAG meets and points, in a, points a delegation before each of the international ISO meetings. So that delegation will then represent the U.S. viewpoint. Uh, they'll be able to ideally people who can negotiate and cooperate and state our position um, and get that voice heard at the international level. So it's important to have a, a strong delegation uh, who has come away from the U.S. meetings with a strong uh, understanding of the U.S. position and ability to, to advocate for it uh, when, we, when we get to those international meetings. On the next slide, we're talking about consensus at the TAGs. Um, Openness, so those are open to all U.S. interested parties who are directly affected. So all of us as life cycle assessment practitioners would fall into that category. Um, consensus, of course, requires balance of interest. Developing the U.S. position uh, needs to take into account the broad range of uh, folks who are interested in the LCA standards and those who are using them. Um, and then each participating member of that tag has one vote um, in coming up with the uh, consensus in that process. So that was some about, you know, how this happened. Uh, what we wanted to get across on the next slide is how we, how, why should I help write a standard? We're really looking for practitioners in the U.S. to get involved, to make their opinions heard, to um, bring their expertise forward. You get um, people involved in these meetings who are not necessarily uh, practitioners who are doing this day to day and working with the standards and working with uh, the the impact of LCA and how it's used. So that's the why. Why should you help write a standard? Um, get involved with these committees. You will have an international impact. It'll affect your organization. Um, if you don't get involved and your organization has a strong opinion about the um, ISO standards around LCA, uh, these things will happen without you if you don't raise your hand and uh, get involved. And the people in the room may not have the best interests of your organization at heart. Um, so you know, it could be your competitors, it could be stakeholders who are not uh, LCA practitioners who have other ideas about how LCA should be used or proceed. So your voice is important at any level to get that you can get involved. Uh, if you use LCA and it's important to you uh, that it's accepted and done competently and, and that the standards may remain vital, getting involved to help write or, um, or mo modify standards is important. 
going on to the next slide, um, this is a little bit of it what's in it for you as you participate. Uh, you do get very unparalleled access to uh, the decision makers in ISO and the high level um, folks who have been involved writing the ISO standards and maintaining them. Uh, so it's a good uh, visibility for yourself to get involved, to uh, have conversation with, with those folks. Um, and then, you know, as you grow to let your strong voice be heard in the development and, and evolution of the standards. Um, so that's your own personal as well as your organization. So if you're a member of a, a company who uses LCA um, or another organization, um, this does provide uh, very high level access to the folks who are uh, responsible for the ISO standards. And then the last point there, of course, is uh, keeping these standards up to date and vital uh, is important because if we don't do that, uh, we can count on the potential for governments to fill the gap with regulation. So having a strong standard that the community abides by um, does keep at bay um, governments filling that gap. So that's another reason to, to get and stay involved. So how can you participate? Um, the simplest way is to join one of the join the U.S. Technical Advisory Advisory Group um, that lets you be an active participant in this process um, and contribute specifically to the development of the U.S. input. Um, it's a good way for you to attend those meetings in person and feedback to your your own organization. So. Um, not having to have a secondhand reporting on what's going on within the U.S. tags and the ISO standard um, processes. You can get there yourself and um, report back to your organization to have a closer connection and a better way to influence the standards. So then finally, we're just getting to, um, many of you probably know most of this, but examples of the ISO standards that we're talking about here that the technical advisory groups are responsible for um, maintaining. So we've got two slides here, the first one being a list of the environmental ISO standards that the US tag is influencing and highlighted at the top, of course, the ISO 14040 and 14044 are the life cycle assessment standards um, specifically. So um, those are at the top of the list, but then you can uh, see as you go down, we've got um, the additional related standards on water footprint, eco, and fish, eco efficiency, um, environmental performance evaluation, greenhouse gas. Um, so all of those are ones that uh, through participation in the tags, you can have the opportunity to uh, learn more about and influence. So that is where um, my comments end and I'll hand off to Kuma who um, along with myself has been involved recently in the um, ISO tag and technical committee activities around the life cycle here. assessment ISO standard. So, um, with that, Kuma, please take it away and provide some more detail on that uh, current and developing news. Thank you. Thank you, Jennifer. I'm Kuma Simutipale. I'm uh, with the American uh, Wood Council. And uh, I've been participating uh, in the ISOTC 207 Subcommittee 5, and I'm going to give you some uh, recent activities and uh, some places where ACLCA can make a real contribution to what's happening with respect to two particular standards, ISO 14040, which is the environmental management, life cycle assessment, which has requirements and guidelines on how to do LCA, and uh, its companion standard, ISO 14044, which is the environmental management, life cycle assessment, principles and, and framework. It's the, the latter standard that really has the, uh, the main uh, meat of uh, what to do on, or how to do a proper life cycle assessment. And uh, on, the, on the bottom of the slide, on the right-hand side, for those with a very good eyesight, I have the, uh, the list of countries listed, just for completeness. The subcommittee five has uh, 56 uh, voting countries and uh, 
20 observer countries. Observer countries' uh, vote is not counted, but they get to comment and they get to see what's going on. And it also has 15 liaison members. Uh, quite a large, quite a few of the 15 uh, liaison members are from uh, European interests, and uh, and that's probably because they have a lot more interest, uh, or, or they have chosen to uh, integrate themselves with the uh, subcommittee five. Now, with the ISO system, each subcommittee has complete technical control over the standards. So these standards are essentially balloted only within the subcommittee. The technical committee 207 sets the policy direction of what the subcommittees can do, but don't really get involved in the technical de details of it. So once the technical committee approves a new standard to be developed and the technical committee needs to do that, it's up to the subcommittee to develop the content. So the, uh, only the subcommittee has control over the content of a standard. Um, <clears throat> and one thing to note of the uh, membership, uh, Russia on this case is actually an observer country of uh, life cycle assessment. Um, whether that represents uh, the level of engagement in life cycle assessment, I don't know, but I thought it'll be important to at least recognize that fairly large uh, economy um, is only an observer member. I'm gonna give an update on the timeline of uh, what has happened with ISO 140 and 14044 uh, standards. These two standards were initially developed in, in 2006. Uh, five years later, there was a ballot to reaffirm them uh, as published in 2006, so no changes were made in 2011. And ISO requires that standards be reviewed every five years. Um, in 2015, uh, roughly about two and a half years ago, we had a ballot to say, hey, do you really want to update ISO 14040 and 14044? And in that ballot, 90 countries said, no, we don't want to open up the standard for any revision. We'd like to keep it the way it is. Um, we essentially reaffirmed it till uh, 2021. So I'm sure the voting countries uh, of SC5 assume that the standards would probably remain the way they were published in 2006 as it was. But last year at an SC5 meeting <clears throat> in, uh, in Halifax, we, uh, we had another uh, look at it. And uh, before I get to that one, we also published a new annex a new Annex C to ISO 14044. Uh, that was done in 2016-2017. Uh, that standard is, is now approved, and uh, we can talk the details of that one uh, in a minute. But <clears throat> I also want to give the fact that at the last year, at the meeting in Halifax, we also decided to create a task group to revise ISO 1404. And I will walk you through how we ended up uh, being able to revise 14040 and 44 after 90 countries have actually voted to keep it the way it is in, as in 2006. <clears throat> All right, I'll give an update on, on what's happened with the new annex to ISO 14044, this was done last year. This uh, annex recognizes two particular footprints by name. It recognizes the carbon footprint, ISO 14067, and the water footprint, 14047. It recognizes them as being compliant with ISO 14044. However, with the caveat that the report of any of those footprint standards have to say that a footprint report does not necessarily address the other impacts. It essentially gives a, a warm and a fuzzy feeling about footprint. 
and that appears to be the intent of Annex uh, C that footprints are somewhat life cycle assessment compliant but does not necessarily address the other impacts. Um, US had a fairly diversified view on this particular annex. Uh, some in the US delegations felt that this will justify footprints as being somewhat akin to life cycle assessment. Whereas most uh, know that life cycle assessment is more than just a single footprint. But nevertheless, this is what the Annex uh, C did. In the final ballot, uh, the US, uh, Singapore, uh, and I think a couple of other countries voted against the Annex C. They didn't like the fact that uh, the footprints are perhaps given a prominent uh, recognition within a life cycle assessment standard. But that is what it is. It's a warm and fuzzy feeling for footprints through this new Annex C. <clears throat> All right, I'm gonna go to uh, what happened at the June uh, 2017 meeting of uh, the subcommittee five. Um, we had a resolution. We took a resolution with uh, 15 members out of our 56 members who were present. We resolved that we are going to look at some items for future work. And the items for future work will be based on the comments that were received on the ballot that asked, do we really want to update the ISO 14044 and ISO 14040 standards? Based on those comments, we'll said we'll develop a group of perhaps future work. This was done by uh, just the 15 members who were present in the Halifax meeting, and we decided to create a task group to look at this work. The task, the task group was uh, signed up by 13 members. Out of the 13 members who signed up to be in the task group, 10 were part of the resolution. <clears throat> so there were three others who signed up um, after the resolution was taken. So, I believe those three countries are people who read the minutes of the meeting and decided, hey, something's going on in here. We want to be a part of that activity. And and I have highlighted those uh, countries uh, for those with a very good eyesight. The three countries who were not members of the uh, of the people who voted for the resolution is Brazil, um, South Korea, and Switzerland. So. They somehow they got on board. They are members of the task group, and uh, they also have two liaison groups who uh, who signed up to be uh, part of this task group. So the, this new task group would go ahead and revise ISO 140 and 14044. This activity uh, already started in October of last year, and uh, will continue throughout this year. And this is perhaps one place where. The CLCA can provide some technical wherewithal to what type of revisions are taking place and in what shape should they be and where these two standards may likely head. Even though the revisions are developed by this task group, they will eventually be balloted through all the 56 countries. But as usually happens with ISO standards, <clears throat> the uh, once it is balloted, it becomes uh, somewhat of a harder task to do revisions. It, it'll be much easier to, to do the revisions we want while the document is still at the task group level. Moving on to the uh, the task group activities, <clears throat> the drafting uh, the task group uh, met uh, in October, and uh, we created several drafting committees to actually draft technical content. And uh, I'm going to highlight the uh, 
the more important uh, drafting committee activities that's currently underway. And one drafting committee is developing attributional life cycle assessment versus consequential life cycle assessment text. The rationale for this inclusion in 14044 in this case is there is a write up um, in ISO 14040 Annex A. It refers to two separate approaches. It doesn't name them. The discussion that took place in the drafting committee is that the approach A, as defined in Annex A of ISO 14044, or 14040, is attributional. So they are essentially naming approach A as an attributional approach. And the approach B is consequential. So that demarcation would likely be made by the text that the drafting committee will develop. And in addition to that, there will be an expansion of how the attributional work needs to be done and consequential needs to be done. This can be an important change that there will be two paths to assess life cycle and it will be the attributional that will have a route and then the consequential. It appears that most of the people are comfortable with the attributional approach and consequential appears to be the new method or the new approach around the block. And if I were to go over some of the discussion that occurred in the drafting committee, I would say that the consequential uh, appears to be a more, bring more controversial aspects uh, for discussion at least. And it might be of interest to see how the text is being developed and uh, and how ACLCA may choose to weigh in on the on the further development of this text. Sure. Thank you. Mike. Mike just brought me the definition on uh, from the glossary of the uh, the environmental life cycle assessment uh, bible, if you will. It refers to the attributional modeling as LTI modeling framework that inventories the input and output flows of all processes of a system as they occur. So I don't think this defines this is defined consequential. All right, it has a consequential modeling as LCI modeling principle that identifies and models all processes in the background system of system in consequence of decisions made in the foreground system. So what's in real time? Yeah, once in the real time, the other ones are this is in the background as well. Um, the drafting committee really hasn't uh, made a lot of progress. We have had multiple conference calls. Um, I know those are the definitions in the book. But the drafting committee has not been able to agree even on the definitions of the, of the two. Um, so that's where we are. Um, so any any help the drafting committee uh, can get would be would be worthwhile. The next uh, drafting committee uh, I'm going to highlight is uh, the, on under the task group to amend one four zero. 44 and 14040 is drafting committee number A5. This drafting committee is dealing with uh, text um, for allocation and it will be an informative annex to ISO 14044. The difference between uh, uh, a normative annex and an informative annex in the ISO jargon is that a, a normative annex uh, can be adopted along with the standard and it will be mandated. Informative annex, on the other hand, is not something that you can mandate to be adopted. They are just for information, as, as the name implies. So this allocation text that would be in the annex to 
14044 would be informative. But that said, um, there's no reason to uh, to prevent an informative annex from becoming a normative annex down the road. So I think uh, whatever allocation material that goes into this uh, this annex uh, should be reviewed, uh, assuming that it can become a normative annex uh, further down the road. This annex uh, uh, has identified three sections that uh, they want to deal with. It's the uh, multifunctional processes with uh, with core products, how to handle those. There'll be some guidance on, on that, on how to allocate <clears throat> and reuse of products and recycling of products. So there will be some distinction that would be brought between the reuse and the recycling aspects also as a part of this new text. Okay, now we get on to the next uh, activity under this drafting committee. This drafting committee also plans to develop a completely new standard, a new technical specification. In, in Again, in the ISO verbiage, a technical specification is, is a document that is one level, uh, one notch below an ISO standard. It is an ISO document, it's an ISO technical specification. Technical specifications uh, typically have a limited life, six years usually, and would usually upgrade itself to an international standard or thrown out. Now, what this standard is likely to do is develop requirements and guidelines for weighting, interpretation, and using results in decision-making processes. There are some members in the drafting committee who believe that there should be one life cycle number, um, LCA number, uh, for a product that we'd be able to look at all, all the LCA attributes and say this particular product is 16 compared to another product that is 25. Whatever that number might mean. Um, and I know the uh, life cycle assessment practitioners would find this uh, somewhat unacceptable because there are some, you, you, you really can't wait and come up with a, with a single number, but, but there is apparently a desire within the group to do just that. And, and how they're gonna provide guidance on it, uh, how to do weighting and interpretation would be, uh, would be of interest. Um, this uh, particular drafting committee has not made a significant uh, inroads as yet, but I do expect uh, there will be some, uh, some activity on this uh, in the next uh, one or two months. So this is an ongoing activity. Um, it's, uh, it's still in the flux. Whether it'll go anywhere is, is another, uh, another issue, but given the, uh, the ISO uh, system and uh, given how, how the balloting works, um, once, uh, once the document's produced, it would likely uh, move forward. So out of the 56 uh, member countries, as I said, not everybody's engaged uh, directly on the technical content of it. And those countries typically tend to vote affirmative when they get a ballot, uh, assuming that it has received a substantial uh, technical review by whoever who developed it, and uh, it usually gets voted positive. So something that uh, ACLC members uh, should consider uh, providing uh, technical input into this particular new technical specification on weighting. It will have a, a 14,000 number to it, and uh, ISO Central Secretariat uh, is uh, fairly uh, cautious about uh, giving out the 14,000 series numbers. Apparently, it's a fairly valued uh, commodity to have a 14,000 number on a standard, um, but this standard was chosen as one of those that receives uh, that special recognition 
um, that decision has already been made. I'm going to give you uh, the timetable on how this task group uh, plans to work on it. The first meeting of the task group uh, happened in, in October 16 to 18. I was uh, at that meeting. Um, and there were some uh, representatives from the US who tried to join in through, uh, through the, uh, the phone service. Uh, it was uh, not ideal, but there was some participation through the phone, but most of the activity took place uh, around the table. Um, the drafting committee uh, created several editing teams, and I described the editing teams and, and the three important ones for ACLCA. That's, uh, that's occurring. Um, and uh, the task groups are moving forward. The second meeting of uh, this particular task group uh, will arc, will be scheduled for 27th and 28th of March this year. It will be in Berlin. Uh, they do expect about uh, 20 people to to show up at the meeting and, and participate. <coughs> and uh, I'm going to highlight the, uh, the meeting date. So we have a good idea about uh, timing. Um, if we go to the next slide. OK, so the task group to amend the ISO 14040 and 44, they'll, as I said, will occur on March 27 and 28 in Berlin. Um, and whatever activities that uh, this task group does will be presented to the ISO TC207 Subcommittee 5 meeting um, scheduled for June 5 through 8 uh, in 2018. So that's the timetable, and that's the activity. Uh, um, that's pretty much all I had. I will hand over to, to Debbie uh, if anyone has any questions or anything uh, for, for the discussion. Please, Debbie, it's yours. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mike, Jennifer, and Kuma. As you see, we have up on the screen here, we will be having future ISO TC webinars, um, but wanted to remind you to please put your questions into the GoToWebinar panel, and we will be able to get them to our speakers. So let's see. Um, the first question that we have is what uh, Debbie, exactly... Debbie. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, Debbie, this is Mike Levy before we get to the questions. Um, you can show the next slide, and uh, while people put in their questions, um, I just wanted to add, uh, first of all, um, in addition to the ISO activity here uh, that uh, uh, we're, we're highlighting with this, this policy committee, uh, I encourage any of you uh, that, that are involved in, in additional uh, related issues uh, to definitely contact any one of us. For instance, uh, the policy committee that Jennifer showed you, which represents at least 20 different organizations, you know, from all kinds of uh, walks of life, you know, university agencies. Uh, one of the things that we're doing in the world of life cycle there is developing backgrounders on probably some key key topics that you and, and all of us are dealing with related to life cycle. That would be things like sustainable materials management, uh, circular economy, and the role of life cycle in green product procurement. Uh, so as ACLCA, as part of their education role on this responsible use of LCA, our first step is to really to just develop backgrounders for all of us to understand what those issues are and what LCA components are. Uh, and then to, to what we just talked about, much like in the ISO uh, activity, uh, we'll then uh, determine, uh, you know, what kind of policy or what kind of uh, position that ACACL will take on that. So. We, we really encourage uh, any of you uh, to, uh, you know, join our activities because these are, are things that us and individual organizations are dealing with. And uh, by pulling all of our knowledge together at ACLCA, we're really, we, we, we're getting some really good input to make sure that whatever's developed really reflects, you know, the cross-section. Uh, so